Book Six Canto One The Word of Fate Then cried the sage, piercing the mother's heart, forcing to steal the will of Savitri. His words set free the spring of cosmic fate. The great gods use the pain of human hearts as a sharp axe to hew their cosmic road. They squander lavishly men's blood and tears for a moment's purpose in their fateful work. This cosmic nature's balance is not ours, nor the mystic measure of her need and use. A single word lets loose vast agencies. A casual act determines the world's fate. So now he set free destiny in that hour. The truth thou hast claimed, I give to thee the truth. A marvel of the meeting earth and heavens is he whom Savitri has chosen mid men. His figure is the front of nature's march. His single being excels the works of time. A sapphire Cutting from the sleep of heaven, delightful is the soul of Satyavan. A ray out of the rapturous infinite, a silence waking to a hymn of joy. A divinity and kingliness gird his brow, his eyes keep a memory from a world of bliss. As brilliant as a lonely moon in heaven, gentle like the sweet bud that spring desires, pure like a stream that kisses silent banks, he takes with bright surprise spirit and sense. A living knot of golden paradise, a blue immense, he leans to the longing world. Time's joy borrowed out of eternity a star of splendor or a rose of bliss. In him soul and nature equal presences balance and fuse in a wide harmony. The happy in their bright ether have not hearts more sweet and true than this of mortal make that takes all joy as the world's native gift and to all gives joy as the world's natural right. His speech carries a light of inner truth and a large-eyed communion with the power in common things 
has made veilless his mind, a seer in earth shapes of garbless deity. A tranquil breadth of sky, windless and still, watching the world like a mind of unplumbed thought. A silent space, musing and luminous, uncovered by the morning to delight. A green tangle of trees upon a happy hill made into a murmuring nest by southern winds. These are his images and parallels, his kin in beauty and in depth his peers. A will to climb lifts a delight to live. Heaven's height, companion of earth beauty's charm. An aspiration to the immortal's air, lain on the lap of mortal ecstasy. His sweetness and his joy attract all hearts to live with his own in a glad tenancy. His strength is like a tower built to reach heaven, a godhead quarried from the stones of life. O oh, loss! If death into its elements, of which his gracious envelope was built, shatter this vase before it breathes its sweets, as if earth could not keep too long from heaven a treasure thus unique, loaned by the gods. A being so rare, of so divine a make. In one brief year, when this bright hour flies back and perches careless on a branch of time, this sovereign glory ends heaven lent to earth. This splendor vanishes from the mortal sky. Heaven's greatness came, but was too great to stay. Twelve swift-winged months are given to him and her. This day returning, Satyavan must die. A lightning bright and nude, the sentence fell. But the queen cried, Vain then can be heaven's grace. Heaven mocks us with the brilliance of its gifts, for death is a cup-bearer of the wine of too brief joy held up to mortal lips for a passionate moment by the careless gods. But I reject the grace and the mockery Mounting thy car, go forth, O Savitri, and travel once more through the peopled lands. Alas, in the green gladness of the woods, thy heart has stooped to a misleading call. Choose once again, 
and leave this fated head. Death is the gardener of this wonder tree. Love's sweetness sleeps in his pale marble hand. Advancing in a honeyed line but closed, a little joy would buy too bitter an end. Plead not thy choice, for death has made it vain. Thy youth and radiance were not born to lie. A casket void dropped on a careless soil. A choice less rare may call a happier fate. But Savitri answered from her violent heart. Her voice was calm, her face was fixed like steel. Once my heart chose and chooses not again. The word I have spoken can never be erased. It is written in the record book of God. The truth once uttered, from the earth's air effaced, by mind forgotten, sounds immortally forever in the memory of time. Once the dice fall, thrown by the hand of fate in an eternal moment of the gods, my heart has sealed its troth to Satyavan. Its signature, adverse fate, cannot efface its seal not fate nor death nor time dissolve those who shall part who have grown one being within death's grip can break our bodies not our soul if death take him, I too know how to die. Let fate do with me what she will or can. I am stronger than death and greater than my fate. My love shall outlast the world. Doom falls from me, helpless against my immortality. Fate's law may change, but not my spirit's will. An adamant will, she cast her speech like bronze. But in the queen's mind listening, her words rang like the voice of a self-chosen doom, denying every issue of escape. To her own despair, answer the mother made. As one she cried, who in her heavy heart labours amid the sobbing of her hopes to wake a note of help from sadder strings. O oh, child, in the magnificence of thy soul, dwelling on the border of a greater world, and dazzled by thy superhuman thoughts, Thou lendst eternity 
to a mortal hope. Here on this mutable and ignorant earth, who is the lover and who is the friend? All passes here, nothing remains the same. None is for any on this transient globe. He whom thou lovest now, a stranger came, and into a far strangeness shall depart. His moments part once done upon life's stage, which for a time was given him from within, to other scenes he moves, and other players, and laughs and weeps mid faces new, unknown. The body thou hast loved is cast away amidst the brute unchanging stuff of worlds, to indifferent mighty nature, and becomes crude matter for the joy of others' lives. But for our souls, upon the wheel of God, forever turning, they arrive and go, married and sundered, in the magic round of the great dancer of the boundless dance. Our emotions are but high and dying notes of his wild music changed compellingly by the passionate movements of a seeking heart in the inconstant links of our with our. To call down heaven's distant answering song, to cry to an unceased bliss is all we dare. Once ceased, we lose the heavenly music sense. Too near, the rhythmic cry has fled or failed. All sweetnesses are baffling symbols here. Love dies before the lover in our breast. Our joys are perfumes in a brittle vase. Oh, then, what wreck is this upon time's sea to spread life's sails to the hurricane desire and call for pilot the unseeing heart? O oh, child, Wilt thou proclaim, wilt thou then follow against the law that is the eternal will, the autarchy of the rash titan's mood, to whom his own fierce will is the one law, in a world where truth is not, nor light, nor God. Only the gods can speak what now thou speakst. Thou who art human, think not like a god. For man, below the god, above the brute, is given the calm reason as his guide. He is not driven by an unthinking will as are the actions of the bird and beast. 
He is not moved by stark necessity like the senseless motion of inconscient things. The giants and the titans' furious march climbs to usurp the kingdom of the gods or skirts the demon magnitudes of hell. In the unreflecting passion of their hearts, they dash their lives against the eternal law and fall and break by their own violent mass. The middle path is made for thinking man. To choose his steps by reason's vigilant light, to choose his path among the many paths is given him. For each his difficult goal hewn out of infinite possibility. Leave not thy goal to follow a beautiful face. Only when thou hast climbed above thy mind and livest in the calm vastness of the One can love be eternal in the eternal bliss and love divine replace the human tie. There is a shrouded law, an austere force. It bids thee strengthen thy undying spirit. It offers its severe benignances of work and thought and measured grave delight as steps to climb to God's far secret heights. Then is our life a tranquil pilgrimage, each year a mile upon the heavenly way, each dawn opens into a larger light. Thy acts are thy helpers, all events are signs, waking and sleep are opportunities given to thee by an immortal power. So canst thou raise thy pure unvanquished spirit till spread to heaven in a wide vesper calm indifferent and gentle as the sky it greatens slowly into timeless peace But Savitri replied with steadfast eyes, My will is part of the eternal will. My fate is what my spirit's strength can make. My fate is what my spirit's strength can bear. My strength is not the titans, it is God's. I have discovered my glad reality beyond my body in another's being. I have found the deep, unchanging soul of love. Then how shall I desire a lonely good or slay 
aspiring to wide vacant peace, the endless hope that made my soul spring forth out of its infinite solitude and sleep. My spirit has glimpsed the glory for which it came, the beating of one vast heart in the flame of things. My eternity clasped by his eternity and tireless of the sweet abysms of time, deep possibility always to love. This, this is first, last joy, and to its throb the riches of a thousand fortunate years are poverty. Nothing to me are death and grief, or ordinary lives and happy days. And what to me are common souls of men, or eyes and lips that are not Satyavans? I have no need to draw back from his arms and the discovered paradise of his love and journey into a still infinity. Only now, for my soul in Satyavan, I treasure the rich occasion of my birth. In sunlight and a dream of emerald ways, I shall walk with him like gods in paradise. If for a year, that year is all my life. And yet I know this is not all my fate, only to live and love a while and die. For I know now why my spirit came on earth and who I am and who he is I love. I have looked at him from my immortal self. I have seen God smile at me in Satyavan. I have seen the eternal in a human face. Then... None could answer to her words. Silent they sat and looked into the eyes of fate.